Coal is one of our biggest and oldest suppliers of energy, but it is also considered one of the dirtiest suppliers of energy. So where is the balance between our need for energy and our concern for our environment and our health? In this debate, we will weigh the costs and benefits of coal and see which one comes out on top. The motion for this debate is as follows. Yes or no to this statement. The San Juan Generating Station, a power plant, I mean a coal plant in Farmington, poses a significant environmental and health hazard to the Four Corners region, and thus should be closed. I am India Waller, and I will be mod moderating for these six intelligent debaters as they try to convince you whether or not um, you should believe that coal should stay in this region as a power source of power or not. Um, please vote at the link below. We, whether you are for or against the motion, you will have to vote twice. Once you will um, state your opinion that you had before the motion, before the debate on the motion, and once um, the debate is over, you will vote again as to what your opinion is then. Remember that the winner of this debate is not the person who has the most votes, but the person who changes the most mind. Um, again, the motion of this debate is the San Juan Generating Station poses a significant health and environmental um, hazard in the Four Corners region and thus should be closed. Let's meet our debaters. Arguing for the motion, we have Jess, who will be discussing the environmental impacts of coal um, on the surrounding area. Next, on the same side, we have Brittany, who will look more specifically at some of the problems with waste disposal. And lastly, arguing for the motion, we have Kaylee, who will look at um, some of the health risks involved with coal. On the side against the motion, we have Helen, who will look at the economic benefits of coal. Um, her teammate, Jesse, will be looking at the reliability, abundance, and whether or not um, coal can help us become more energy independent. Lastly, on the side arguing for, I mean against, the motion, we have Elizabeth, who will take a closer look at some of the new technology, new, tech, new technological advancements that have been made to make coal a cleaner burning Fuel. To start off the debate, we have Jess. So, 41% of the world runs on coal for energy. At the same time, coal has made a great impact on our environment. The San Juan coal mine, which is just 25 kilometers west of Farmington, New Mexico, is the dirtiest coal mine that still operates. It is 33,000 acres big and produces 13 million tons of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the leading factors for environmental disturbance. According to National Resource Defense Council, the power plant releases 191,495 pounds of poisons, consisting of 51 pounds of mercury, 662 pounds of selenium, 35,553 pounds of sulfuric acid, 34,844 pounds of hydrochloric acid, and 18,000 tons of nitrogen oxide gas. When nitrogen oxide gas reacts with sunlight, it forms smog and contributes to haze and acid rain, resulting in damaging lakes, streams, forests, plants, animals, and their ecosystems. According to the Wild Earth Guardians, in 2009, the power plant released more than 5,500 tons of sulfur dioxide, which forms acid rain and poses health risks. The pollution from the plant is responsible for 33 deaths, 300 asthma attacks, 31 emergency boom visits, and it comes out to be a total of $254 million estimated in cost. That cost could be put towards better equipment for the coal mine instead of going to health for those people who need it. So alternatives should be put in place. Solar energy or hydroelectric electricity. Solar energy is expensive, but in the long run, it pays itself off. While hydroelectricity, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, 
represents 19% of total electricity product. These alternatives will save our planet so that our generations can see what our, uh, see our beautiful planet. Thank you, Jess. Our next debater is Helen, arguing against the motion. Helen? Throughout history, America has faced and overcome many financial crises. However, the crisis that many people in the United States are faced with today is one of the most devastating we have seen in quite some time. With the high unemployment rates and vast financial problems, it is essential that we invest in a source of energy that will help revive our failing economy. There is much debate over what this source of energy is, however the answer is simpler than some may think. The source of energy is coal. The U.S. needs to invest in coal because not only is it cost effective, but it also is responsible for creating millions of much needed jobs. If you look strictly at the numbers, you will see that coal is the most cost effective energy source of today. According to IEA statistics, the levelized cost of coal is 9% cheaper than nuclear and 70% cheaper than solar power. Solar power. And if you compare it to natural gas, it is you will find that the power generated cost of coal is half that of any natural gas. There is an abundant source of energy that is cheap, so why not use it? As well as being a source of cheap energy, the coal industry is responsible for providing millions of much needed jobs, like I said earlier. Um, according to the World Coal Organization, in 2010, the coal mining industry was responsible for providing over 7 million jobs worldwide and at least, 100, at, least a, at least a million in the United States alone. If these coal flower plants were to be shut down, all of these people relying on the coal industry as their source of income would left, be left suffering and the already high unemployment rates would drastically increase. It is likely that these people who have dedicated their lives to the coal industry would lose their jobs and they would not um, immediately find a place within the new industry, if at all. A smart thing to do in this situation is to stick with the most cost effective source of energy that we have today, which is coal, and until our country's economy is stable enough to move towards greener energy. Because without a stable economy, we are treading water, not able to move forward, only backward. So you have to vote to keep coal plants open and create a stable economy, or vote to shut them down and suffer the consequences. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Our next debater is, again, for the motion, um, Brittany. Okay, let's face it. No matter what, coal is in fact the dirtiest substance that we use for energy. It contaminates everything that it comes in contact with and creates problems at every step in this life cycle. From unhealthy and unsafe underground mines, to environmental catastrophe of mountaintop removal, to the problems associated with handling the enormous piles of ash that are produced every day. Today, U.S. plants annually release about 176,000 pounds of lead, 161,000 pounds of chromium, and 100,000 pounds of arsenic. Just to point out, all those chemicals are very harmful to human beings. According to the EPA, Coal contributes 31% of all CO2, leading to smog, ruined cities. Now please, place yourselves in the, the shoes of an individual in India, where their visibility is low and where they are affected by that smog each day, where they must, where they must sacrifice each every, or must sacrifice watching their land disappear, and finally because they know it's, that coal is important to their energy lifestyle. Thanks. Thank you, Brittany. Um, next, we have Ovid arguing against the motion. As we all know, coal has a bad, a bad reputation in the U.S. for creating pollutants. But most people are looking at the emissions and not looking at the technology that's going behind it. Um, there are new technologies um, emerging every day that can help um, contribute to healthier emissions um, coming from coal power plants. One of these new technologies are called um, electrostatic precipitators. It's a kind of filter that can eliminate up to 99% of the toxic fly ash from the flue gas being emitted from the coal power plants. The way it works is it, it <coughs> filters through dust and particles that can be um, potentially harmful out of the airstream and, and, and they're not emitted in the um, emissions coming out of the smokestack. Now, that covers that topic, but what about the emissions? Well, there's a solution for that too. There are burners that have been around for quite a while, and more coal power plants are, are um, 
able to access these new technologies now, and they are called low nitrogen oxide burners. And how these work is that they control the airflow and they burn at lower temperatures, decreasing the amount of nitrogen oxide going into the atmosphere. And according to the World Nuclear Association, when uh, the nitrogen oxide filters, uh, burners, are partnered with the reburning techniques of some of these coal power plants, uh, the emissions, the nitrogen oxide emissions can be reduced up to 70%, therefore eliminating much of the haze and pollutants that are being blown into the atmosphere. Because of these technologies and precautions being taken, it is very possible that the quality of the air around uh, nuclear coal, coal power plants, will grow exponentially in improving the lifestyle, air quality, plant life, and overall well-being of those locations. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, next, we have Kaylee arguing for the motion. Even though coal power plants are an inexpensive way to produce energy, the impact it has on health and the people and the air around is very negative. Power plants can't make up for the lives they have taken and the toll that they have taken on our medical field. A study done by American Lung Association shares the health hazards that are caused by coal power plants. Because of the pollution of the power plants, ALA says that there are about 13,000 people a year that die due to coal power plants. There are alternatives such as solar power. It is more expensive, <coughs> but due to the but uh, due to the power plants or the impact that the power plants have are no longer in existence. Coal is responsible for many deaths, and it is only going to increase. It will continue to pollute the air that we breathe, and people will continue to die from it. If you really think about it, it's worth paying extra money for something that, <coughs> for something such as solar, because when you add up the entire cost of funeral, funerals, it adds up. You may not think something like this could ever happen to you, <coughs> but it very well can. And when everything is always much, everything is always much different when it happens to you. This is taking lives, taking members of a family, and yet we still continue to have it around. It's time to give it up and end, <coughs> and end the pollution of the air and the lives that are being harmed for a more cleaner, for a cleaner energy source. A person's health and their lives are much more important than how much money we can save by using a cheaper energy source. A study that was done by Harvard Kennedy School says that 70% of the world's electricity comes from coal power plants. The studies show that exposure, exposure to the air pollutants caused by coal power plants such as nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide, increases risks of having respiratory illness, lung cancer, or even asthma. <clears throat> these, are these are the lives of people around the pa power plant, in the power plant's hands. What they choose today will shape the future tomorrow. We, the people, should have a say on where our money goes. With coal power plants, all you do is put lives in danger and pollute the air that we breathe. By ending the coal, by putting the coal power plant to an end, we will save lives and increase health, better health. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylee. Um, our last debater this evening against the motion is Jesse. Um, coal is one of the most, if not the most, abundant fuels in the fossil fuel family. Coal has been used since the second and third centuries for burning fuel to provide fast heat for warmth and cooking. In the 1800s, the use of coal shifted as it was seen to be a suitable provider of fuel to machines and other uses such as steamships, railroads, um, weaponry, factories, and iron blast furnaces for making iron, or metal, I'm sorry. However, in the 1880s, coal was seen to fit a more expansive purpose, which was generating electricity to factories and homes. And now, according to the World Coal Organization, Coal is used to generate 42% of the entire world's electricity. My opponents argue that having coal is unclean, that it presents negative effects on the environment, and that it can be a dated 
use of energy. However, if coal plants are closed, there would be no way to compensate for the vast amount of energy that coal supplies us. In addition to the fact that coal is our country's main source of energy, coal has been long used and therefore it is a known and reliable source. Uh, as previously mentioned, it has been used for over 800 years for energy and for survival. And in that period of time, we as a society have learned the side effects of coal power plants and have a strong understanding of how to control them. In addition, with the development of new technology, we are learning to burn coal in a cleaner manner, as Elizabeth has mentioned. Um, whereas other sources such as um, natural gas, nuclear energy, and renewables are more unfamiliar to us, and so they pose a threat of unknown effects. Along with the reliability that coal ensures us, coal provides the United States a way to become more energy independent, sustainable, and self-sufficient. A BP statistical review of energy found that there are the most coal reserves in North America, denoting that we can become more independent and increase the heavy energy reliance on other countries. Likewise, according to World Coal Organization, most coal is consumed domestically and only 15% is traded internationally. And therefore, if we were to decrease the amount of coal power plants in America, we would have to depend immensely on other countries. Moreover, it has been estimated that there are over 860 billion tons of proven coal reserves worldwide. This means that there is enough coal to last at least 118 years based on the coal consumption that rate we are at right now. Um, in contrast, other resources such as you know, natural gas and oil, there is only a 57 year supply of that um, yeah, during our consumption levels. This amount of coal reserves present the United States ensures that we can continue to gain access to energy in a safe, dependable manner for generations to come. For this reason, it is vital that we do not shut down these reliable coal power plants prematurely and that we continue to use these dependable resources as long as we can. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jesse. Um, that concludes our opening statement portion of this debate. We will now go into question and answers. To start us off, I have a question for the arguers on the for the motion side. You talked a little bit about some of the health effects associated with the coal um, power plants. I was just wondering about some of the more local um, effects that we see today such as fish consum consumption advisories and other things to do with mercury poisoning. Okay, um, can you please uh, just, I would, uh, would you talk a little bit about some of the more local effects that we see in Durango or around Durango? Okay, so um, shrimps from the San Juan coal mine has affected not just humans but just animals. And the animals have the, been getting very sick from the mercury levels from the coal plant and haven't been producing, I guess, enough offspring. And it's very bad for, well, not really producing, but they've gotten um, such mercury in their bodies that when we fish for them and eat them, we're consuming more bad stuff in our bodies from the same one. Cool. So. Um, does the other side want to say anything about that? Oh, my only question is, um, so when we shut down this new plant, there's going to be new source of energy that's going to need to come in, and whether they can get solar right now, we don't know, so likely it's going to be more natural gases and like if you look at the fracking things, there are many um, harmful consequences, such as the pollution of water. So I don't think that shutting down this um, coal, coal power plant will necessarily stop the harmful effects on animals. Yes, but the coal power plant is um, <laughs> is um, very dirty, and I think if you just clean up that coal plant, it would still produce lots of energy for the people around it, but it would be cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for the side against the motion. So with, kind of goes up, um, off of what Helen said, with these other sources of energy such as renewable, um, nuclear, and natural gas, what really makes coal so necessary and why should we keep it here in our region? Um, as I was saying in my opening statement, in coal is used to produce 42% of the world's electricity. And so it is the only like 
cheaper and like large mass resource that we have right now that everybody can use and that provides enough energy that um, we are consuming. So it is vital to keep it as your question, I think is what you're saying. Um, it's important that we have it or keep it because without it, um, we will not have enough energy based on the consumption rates of energy. What about the harmful pollutants? Um, well, as Elizabeth was saying, I don't know if you want to talk about this, um, but they are working on new technology to clean up, um, I don't know, to make cleaner uh, power plants. Yes. Um, <clears throat> There are many technologies that are available to the coal power plants all over the nation to, uh, to filter out harmful toxins, dust particles, and other um, types of chemicals being released into the atmosphere. And um, that will clean the air and provide a higher quality um, water source from the, um, it protects it from the potentially harmful emissions. Though the harmful emissions, if treated right, will <coughs> not pose a threat. There will, there will be much less and there will be a decreasing amount of um, toxic chemicals being released into the atmosphere. Thus helping the water sources and other plant life in the area. And they, to kind of go off that a little bit, so once you take these pollutants out of the emissions, what do you do with them and how do you deal with the health risks of the waste that you just made? The waste from the um, filters um, gets deposited into a waste facility and is safely um, kept there, um, free from getting caught into the airstream and other sources, such as water and dirt. I have, uh, would you like to say something? Yes. Uh, something? Um, <laughs> um, are those technologies put into use, or are they still making them? They are currently available to all coal power, coal-fired power plants who are willing to use them. Uh, I would like to point out that in, since 2009, the San Juan Generating, sta the San Juan Generating Station has um, has invested $320 million in, be in greener technology, so they are definitely working to um, make their, their plant specifically cleaner. I have another question for the uh, <laughs> debaters on the poor side of the motion. Um, so, Helen talked a lot about the economic benefits and the jobs that the coal plants provide. What are some of the alternatives to fill that void if we were to remove this this power plant? I think solar power would be something that we could invest in, but it's also going to have to be something that we work at, not just completely drop the coal power plant right away because it, we can't just bring in something new and just be done. We have to work at it slowly. Yes. I'd also like to add on to that. I feel like people can, like individuals, can recycle and can help out not on a big scale, but on a little scale. Um, not really for jobs. Well, for jobs and for just us uh, individually. You can just help out the environment as best as you can. So what would happen to the all those people who right now, their source of income is with the San Juan Generating Station. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. So now I have two questions for um, both sides. The first one is, what will be the effects on future generations if we were to keep the power plant or if we were to get rid of the power plant? Either way, what are the positive and negatives? of both sides for future generations. Let's start with the against. Okay, well, um, in New Mexico, um, the people of New Mexico are very invested in this coal plant, especially in the Navajo Nation, because it is adjacent to their land and it's where they get a lot of their income. And I think that if we were to shut this place down, <coughs> um, those individual families would suffer, which may, um, go on into the next generation and prevent them from getting out of poverty or send them to below the poverty. 
Um, it will also continue to pollute the air and increase health risks. And um, health, some of the health risks are you could possibly get asthma or um, respiratory illness. And so those will just continue to increase. So on both sides, we talked about one way of making coal a cleaner burning fuel, and here we talked about renewable energy. So what are the pros and cons of each, and why should we choose one or the other? Let's start with the poor side. Um, so coal is it's fast, it's efficient, and it works pretty much 24-7. While um, eco-friendly things or energies like solar or wind or water don't constantly work um, because solar, for example, the sun's not always up, so you don't always get energy from it, and it's not you can't get as much energy as the demand of people who want that energy. Against? Yeah, well, for that, um, reason, um, solar and remote renewables are unreliable, whereas right now coal is reliable and we have many reserves that we can still use. And um, if we were completely to replace, for example, the San Juan generating station with um, solar power, it is estimated that it would cost another $4 billion, which right now I don't think the state of New Mexico has to invest <coughs> in that. And it also has its environmental effects of its own because it would take over 18,000 acres of land. Um, that concludes our question and answering section of this debate. We will now give the debaters two minutes to discuss and refine their closing statements. now continue on for our final closing statements from each member of the debate team. This time we will start on the side arguing against the motion with Helen. Okay, so the motion at hand today is whether or not the San Juan generating station located in New Mexico should be shut down. In order to determine this, we have to look at the effects that this plant has on the people of New Mexico. I've already laid out uh, the reasons as to why coal energy is good for the United States economy and people, so now I want to bring it locally and talk about how it benefits the people and economy of New Mexico. Right now, New Mexico has the third highest poverty rate in the United States, and coal is one of their major industries. In a study performed by the Arrowhead Center, it found that um, the coal mining industry in New Mexico contributed $1.039 billion to, in output to the state's economy, and this money 
would disappear if these plants were to be shut down. And yes, it might come back in the new industries, but what about the in between, in between, in between period for the, the people would lose their source of income as well as the state, um, as well as being a source of um, income. The San Juan Generating Station also provides jobs to the men and women of New Mexico. It is said by Power New Mexico that the total associated costs with coal or jobs is three thousand two hundred ninety-three. Um, because coal is such a large contributor to the economy of New Mexico, if you vote to shut it down, you are crippling the thousands of people who have who have their source of income coming from the San Juan San Juan Generating Station. Thank you, Helen. Now, arguing for the motion, we have Jess. With all the emissions from the San Juan coal mine, health effects, and the total cost of everything, um, the there has to be a way to keep the environment clean for the future generations. By making those changes, people don't have to worry about health, and they don't have to worry about the environment they live in. And our environment needs to be preserved so that we don't have to waste all of our resources and maybe use them for possible future, the possible future. <laughs> the only way is to eliminate the pollution, and you can start by the, with the San Juan coal mine, and by either using alternatives to get rid of the mine, or alternatives like soil, wind, or water power, or we can just get rid of the mine altogether. We must move New Mexico beyond uh, coal and to use clean, clean sources of energy. Um, and by doing so, we are preserving the land so that we so desperately need for possible future use. Thank you, Jess. Um, we will now hear again from the side arguing against the motion, Elizabeth. <coughs> so, <coughs> as I argued earlier, uh, there are many new technologies available to all these coal power plants here in the U.S. But focusing more on the San Juan Generating Station, uh, they have uh, they have had these um, these advanced technology advanced technologies available to them and have used them. Uh, Numbers from Power New Mexico show that the nitrogen oxide emissions in recent years are down 44% from its 2006 levels, showing that the use of these advanced technologies are being, they are being used and they are being um, efficient enough and we are living in a cleaner environment due to these technologies. And with the um, advancements in technology happening every day, it is very possible that um, the Four Corners region will become a cleaner place with the use of all these advanced technologies in coal power plants. And um, it, it is possible to achieve a greener community if the plants decide to use these greener technologies available to them. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Brittany arguing for the motion. Knowing that we as a nation, we have enormous and ever-growing appetite for energy. Considering that coal counts for 40% of all electric generation and 21% of all energy in the U.S., I do understand that that is a lot of energy to replace. But the chances of finding something that is reasonable to protect our land in the future is um, up in the air. Realize that coal plants release more radiation than nuclear plants, and add on top of that, uh, it pumps 96,000 pounds of mer mercury in the air each year. So, do you think we can sacrifice putting away the San Juan generation and finding some replaceable energy to protect our lands and the people <coughs> for our future generations? Thank you. <laughs> um, our last debater on the against side <laughs> um, is. Jesse. Um, as Helen just said, today we are debating whether or not the San Juan Generating Station in New Mexico should remain open or not. And currently, according to Power New Mexico, the San Juan Generating Station provides two million people with energy. If this generating station were to be closed, these two million people who are depending on the energy of this station would still need energy, and likely it would just come from a different um, supplier of energy or a different coal plant farther away. So closing this generating station would be futile. Um, sorry. At the moment we have an energy source that we can 
obtained locally and we can provide not only energy but income for people um, who are living there by the coal plant um, for locals of the next century and beyond. So we must ask ourselves, is removing sustainability, depleting our energy for future generations, and eradicating energy for two million people worth the cause? You tell me as you vote for the people of New Mexico and keep the coal plant that they rely on open. Thank you, Jesse. And now our last debater for the motion is Kaylee. There is millions of dollars going to the medical field because people are going to the hospital from the pollution of coal by power plants. Money that could money that could be going to cleaner energy sources. Lives are being taken because they can't breathe due to the pollution of the air surrounding. It's not fair to the families losing those they love and to those whom are dying because they can't breathe. There are other alternatives. It depends on whether or not we choose to go ahead and go with that alternative. It's time we take up a cleaner energy source. If we choose not to, things will only continue to get worse. According to environmental health and engineering, they say there are many air pollutants caused by coal fire, coal burning fire plants. The pollutants can cause health effects such as damage to the eyes and breathing passages, effects to the kidneys, lungs, and nervous system, and could poten potentially cause cancer. People can be exposed to mercury from the power plant by simply ingesting food. This is not safe. We could change all of this just by investing in a cleaner energy source. <coughs> a study in eastern Ohio said that coal combustion was responsible for 70% of the mercury that was found in the rainfall. In, in the same area, they say 42% of the mercury found in the summer rainfall was caused by coal-fired coal -fired power plants. It's time to put this, put this to an end and invest in a cleaner energy source. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee, and thank you to all the debaters. This concludes our debate. Remember to please go to the link below and vote whether you are for or against the motion. Um, remember, if you vote yes, you are voting against coal power plants in the region. And if you vote no, then you are voting for coal power plants in the region. Um, thanks so much for watching and thank you for voting.